So, um, okay, um, I'm Sung Woo, uh, here is Ran Jan. Uh, so we're gonna talk about some generic sparse data structures and GPU today. So uh, sparse matrix, um, uh, so that's something that we use every day, right? Uh, it comes up in like almost every scientific problems with a large number of grid points. Uh, and it's not just the kernels of those sparse matrices that are important, but also how we store them is it's very important because it will really uh, impact a lot of kernels that you're gonna use and uh, overall performance of your simulator or like models. So uh, me and Ranjan, we started this uh, DIA type. Uh, it's, it's one of the primitive sparse storage type. Uh, it, just stores uh, diagonals. Uh, so as you can see here, I, I wrote up this small example matrix, and uh, we store these four diagonals separately. As you can see here, uh, for example, like the sub-diagonal 3010 is stored with the uh, band negative one, which is the position of the diagonal, and uh, values uh, 3010. And uh, this DIA, uh, if you guys are like familiar with uh, finite difference or finite element, this is actually the the kind of matrices that comes from the structured grid problems. So um, of course, uh, we're, we're not using TPU, but we want it on GPU. So uh, we wanted to implement a lot of things in GPU. So we wanted to first compare some sparse matrix vector multiplication kernels. Uh, in case of CSC, which is the default sparse array in Julia, uh, as you can see on the valves, uh, this is a GPU implementation of the sparse CSC method, and uh, valves, we have a contiguous memory access, whereas we have a, a random access because of double indexing there on X. So that means uh, GPU is not gonna like this a lot. Whereas in uh, DIA format, uh, we can break down the sparse matrix vector multiplication into four uh, dot moles, which is something that GPU really likes. So um, that means uh, we are gonna have both contiguous access on ma matrix side and the vector side, which is very good for GPU. Uh, GPU likes that because they can do uh, memory coalescing access and um, so if you guys are using uh, structure grid or structure uh, problems, and if you guys are using GPU, then I think uh, DIA is kind of like the best choice you can get. So um, this was just uh, DIA, but we wanted to do some cool stuff with DIA. So we, our first application is uh, multi-grid preconditioner. Uh, just briefly explaining, multi-grid is a a multi-resolution version of Jacobi-like iterative PDE solvers. Uh, it has a hierarchy of grids, like in the figure here. Uh, we correct the low frequency errors with the coarse grid corrections. And uh, if you ask uh, applied mathematician what's the best preconditioner uh, for elliptic problems, uh, probably a lot of guys are gonna say it's multi-grid right now. Uh, and here, Ranjan also implemented a very cool package, algebraic multigrid.jl, which you guys might want to check out. And there are uh, two types of multigrid preconditioners. Um, one is algebraic multigrid, and the, uh, the other one is geometric multigrid. Um, algebraic multigrid is a completely black box implementation, which is uh, very cool because whatever random sparsity pattern you just input, they're gonna give you a multi-grid structure, which is very cool. So that means it's very suitable for uh, sparse matrix CSC types. But there is a drawback, it's uh, setup is kinda expensive and it's really hard to parallelize. Uh, another uh, multi-grid is geometric multi-grid. It's, uh, it's kinda sad that it only works for a structured grid, but it's cheap and intuitive, and the good thing is that we can use DIA on this. So uh, people have been really love to implement this multi-grid things on GPU these days. Um, it's, it's one of the hottest topic. And um, 
AMG on GPU, this is, I think this might be like one of the coolest preconditioner right now, but it's extremely hard to uh, implement because the, the setup phase is naturally very serial. So there aren't many implementations out there. Uh, one of them is uh, AMGX that's from NVIDIA, which is pretty nice and it's also open source, which is pretty amazing. Um, on the other side, um, GMG on GPU is, it's, it's more suitable for parallelism, that's good. But the thing is that it's kind of problem specific, which means it's really hard to make a generic implementation. So uh, me and Ranjan, we, deci we decided to, to approach with a hybrid type of multigrid, which we're gonna use a aggregation, uh, and we're gonna use aggregation-based uh, geometric multigrid, and that is uh, implemented on GPU by using uh, our DIA.jl and uh, algebraic multigrid.jl. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, here are some benchmarks, uh, which the bottom line is that uh, GPU is a lot faster if you want to do multigrid. Um, we had two uh, matrices, Laplacian operator, and a Jacobian from a reservoir simulator. Um, as you can see here, uh, especially on a set of phase, uh, we have like 50 times of a speed up, which was pretty amazing. I just, uh, just to add one point to that about the setup phase, um, it's usually much more integrated in an algebraic multigrid, which is why we see such a high speed up. Um, but uh, but in, our, in our geometric multigrid, uh, multi it's, uh, it's much easier. We sort of define operators to do, to do some, of the inst uh, some of the restrictions instead of actually computing matrices that which you do sometimes in algebraic multigrid. So, um, yeah, so some of that uh, speed up is, is, is in the intricacy of, of the hierarchy we're building. Um. So uh, we also wanted to uh, show how it's really nice to use a precondition GM REST with the multigrid. Uh, we have some speed ups of uh, CPU versus GPU here, uh, of course, uh, whenever we use GPU, it was uh, a lot more faster. And the last thing is, this is just to demonstrate how multigrid is powerful for the uh, powerful preconditioner, because like without multigrid preconditioning, uh, these matrices, these linear systems are gonna be solved with uh, like 300 iteration, 251 iterations, whereas with the multigrid, we only need 14 or just one iteration to solve it. So. This was our first application, but the second application we used is, uh, it was a reservoir simulation, which um, I will not explain what these PDE is, but it's just some couple nonlinear PDE. Uh, we use a control volume finite difference, um, and uh, of course, because it's nonlinear, we're gonna use a nonlinear Newton solves. Uh, and these, uh, traditionally, this whole industry, it's always been the most important thing was uh, linear solving because these uh, matrices are gonna be very huge and very ill-conditioned. And uh, using our DIA.jl, we were able to actually uh, solve the SPE10 problem, which is one of the famous SPE10 benchmark problems. Um, it has a huge and ill-conditioned linear systems. And uh, one of the coolest thing here is that we were actually figure, uh, we, we were actually we succeeded to make a full GPU reservoir simulator, which is, as far as I know, there are uh, like only one full reservoir, uh, full GPU simulator out there. So um, the thanks to CUDA Native and um, uh, GPU and Julia, we have this um, implementation details there and. And uh, one of the cool thing is that we were able to do auto, auto diff on GPU, which, which made us really easy to compute the stencils. And um, all these implementations, we, were, uh, we worked on DIA.jl too. So um, this is just, um, just to validate ourselves that we are uh, solving the right thing. So we solved SP10 and we compared it against other uh, companies' results. Uh, so, and as you can see, the, the orange line is Julia results, which pretty much agrees with other results. And yeah, that was our reservoir simulator. Yep. 
that's the end of the talk. Any question? Okay. Thanks for your great talk. Thank you.